let's just repeat what we did really quick. We have a source voltage, sorry, we actually have a power supply voltage collector. We have a, a resistor in the collector circuit. We come down to our bipolar transistor, and in this case here, let me just take this to ground, and we bring a signal in. So we said that for a signal coming in, we're going to block the capacitance. Okay? For a signal coming in, we had the gain, the voltage gain here, equal to the collector resistor over the RE prime resistance, which is that resistance in the emitter. Okay. Okay, that's the gain in voltage. How about current? Well, actually, we do have current gain. The current gain is equal to your beta. It's the multiplier of basically the current you get through the collector over the current that you get through the base, and that is your beta. So we have current gain, we have voltage gain. This is a common emitter transistor configuration, and therefore, because voltage times current is equal to power, our power gain is equal to our voltage gain times our current gain. Right? So just substituting in, we can do that quickly, we would have beta RC over RE prime for a power gain. Okay, that is fine, but that's not the only configuration we have. We have other configurations. You can bring the signal in on the base, of course, and take it off the emitter. You can bring the signal in on the emitter and take it off the collector. Let's look at those two other configurations. So the one we're looking at right now is a common collector. Again, similar to the common emitter, but in this case here, we'll not have a signal inversion because we're going to take the signal off the emitter here. Okay? And we're going to bring the signal in on the base small c and small e, the uh, AC equivalent of the uh, um, emitter resistor. So again, if I look at this particular model, this is our current source, which is again I, B, beta. And this is our emitter resistance, our E prime. This is our base. What I see here, looking in here, is I see uh, R, E, prime plus this is all the transistor plus this resistance here which is the AC equivalent of the emitter resistance. We'll talk about that in a second. I'll talk to you uh, showing you why you have an AC equivalent versus a DC equivalent on resistance. It depends on what extra devices you put on in parallel with it, the load devices. But right now we're out, we don't have a load, but we do have a emitter resistance. So when I'm coming in here at the base, the voltage that I see here at the base is a result of this emitter current due to AC flowing. So my base voltage is going to be, let's look at this, V in is going to be The current flowing through the sum of those two resistors. Okay. Now the, the signal that we're going to take here is from this point. So the output voltage is going to be the emitter current that we have flowing here times the AC equivalent of emitter resistance. Now, given that RE is pretty small compared to RE subprime, sorry, it's small compared to RE. This may be on the order of 10K. This may be on the order of 10 ohms, uh, a greatly uh, outratioed uh, resistance. What we effectively have is RE over RE, which is 1. Hmm. How is that? We had a gain of RC over RE prime here, but the gain for the common collector amplifier is one for voltage, for voltage. But we still, for what we put in to what we get out, still have a current gain. So we still overall have a power gain. Now, that's all, that's all good. Um, again, just from a simple sketch, we had 
a transistor that looked like this. And so we realized that with the in versus the out, the emitter is common. Here we've got a transistor that looks like this. because we've taken the signal off the emitter, okay? So what we've got is a common collector in this case here. This is the input, this is the output. Now, I can change this up a bit and I can basically bring a signal in on the emitter and then take it off the collector. So let's see if I can just fit that in. Uh, let me just do it here. So I'm gonna take a signal off there and I'm going to bring it in here. This is my, and this is my AC equivalent collector resistance and AC equivalent remitter resistance. Now, the thing is, the thing is, in order for this circuit to work, what I need to do, first of all, we bias this up, of course, in order to get a bias in there. But what I need to do is put a capacitor to ground. And what that does, is, again, remembering that the impedance of a capacitor is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc, that essentially replacing all the capacitors in an AC analysis with a short circuit is something you should do. What we end up looking at here is essentially, let me short this point, you've got an emitter resistor, this one here, in parallel with my emitter sub E, R sub E prime resistance. Okay. You know that because this is a short circuit, so I'm basically bringing, from this model here, I'm bringing my emitter resistance sub prime, uh, E sub, R E sub, uh, sub E prime to ground and putting it in parallel with R E, looking at the voltage at this point, which is VB, which is VN. As you can see, two resistors in parallel the rule, as you know, is it will be much less, much less than the lowest resistor. So in this case here, a very low resistance in. So a low resistance in, approximately RE prime, and if that is the case, then when we have our uh, AC emitter resistance times RE prime in order to give me V in, and I look at my output, from here, which is going to be effectively R E R C, the V out, okay? Then let me come down here for a common base. For a common base, my, my gain for voltage is going to be, if we say R C or R E is canceling out here, it's going to be R C over R E prime. So slightly different than the uh, common emitter, okay? But in this case here, there is no current gain from the base to the emitter. It's like in our water configuration when we had a faucet, we were putting our finger over the bottom of the spout. That's where we're modulating the current. So in this case here, for a common base, current gain is one. So you get a voltage gain with a common base, but no current gain. You get a current gain with a common collector, but no voltage gain and you get a voltage gain and a current gain with a common emitter. So why these different configurations? The reason why is depending on the signal that you're bringing in, what is its source? If it is a high impedance source, let's say from a pH sensor, then you don't want to load that signal down. You want to offer a high resistance. If it is a low impedance load, like a speaker, an eight ohm speaker, again, you want to match the output from your amplifier to the load to maximize the power transfer. So different configurations using a model like this and looking into a model like this is, depending on where you are, if I come in at RE, it's this is the impedance I look in. If I'm coming in on the base, again, these two combined is what I'm coming in. And again, looking at the output load, um, seeing what that looks like to my, uh, my uh, supply, uh, the load I'm supplying, again, we can play with those particular numbers. Thanks. So let's just summarize what we've picked up today. Uh, of course, just as a recap, you do know from Ohm's law that voltage equals current times resistance, so that's good. I need you to try and keep in mind that we're looking at this as a current source. 
that we're looking at this current source that feeds this RE prime, which is your transistor now for the AC model, for the AC model, okay? And that RE prime is equal to 25 millivolts over the DC current that you established by setting up your bias. I also would like you to keep in mind that the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over 2 pi Fc. And thus, if you have something, for example, in the collector, like this, and you have a capacitively coupled load resistor like this, what's actually happening is that this device, if you short, if you short the capacitor like I've asked you to, then you've got essentially the voltage at this point, my output, is two resistors in parallel. So what we say is, is that we use a small c to reflect the fact that in an AC analysis, if you short the capacitors uh, through, that you're actually putting resistors in parallel, and that resistance, therefore, due to AC, will be less than the R C that is seen from a DC analysis. We also have another situation that you'll come across as well, is we may put the capacitor here. And what happens is, for your DC bias setup, you will see RE, and that will establish your uh, quiescent point, your normal operating currents. But from an AC perspective, we end up shorting this out, and so your equivalent circuit from an AC perspective is this one, okay? So, short the capacitors, Use this particular model for AC. Recall that voltage equals current times resistance from Ohm's law. Recall that collector current is equal to beta IB. And gain, voltage gain, is equal to V out over V in. Current gain, more often than not, just the beta. Power gain, AV times uh, AI. And I think, I think, you will put a good dent into your AC analysis of transistor circuits.